blood on my hands. And he looks up and his friends are just in this house that's just on fire. Hello everybody, this is Katherine Raven, also known as Craven. I'm a filmmaker and I love music videos. I decided I'm just gonna do a what is filmmaking in music videos series using some of my favorite TXT music videos. The first apartment that's probably the kind of easiest to kind of tell you some of the things without going into super, super detail is production design. Production design is everything that you can physically see in a video from decor to furniture to props and even hair, makeup, and wardrobe. Some of the most notable hyper stylistic directors that are very heavy on art department would be like Tim Burton, Stanley Kubrick, and one of my favorite music video directors of all time, Hype Williams. So the purpose of production design is to help enhance the mood, the feelings, any themes, our styles. Also, production design is a really good tool to utilize for Easter eggs, especially in videos like Tomorrow by Together where there's lots of Easter eggs like in the posters. And when we say Easter eggs, we mean things that are like foreshadowing or little clues about the story or things that are to come. So with all that being said, the video from Tomorrow by Together that I feel like really, really shows production design is Can't You See Me? So a little bit of backstory for me is when I was in college for filmmaking, I came up with this concept that is very, very similar to the visuals of Can't You See Me? And this was my first Tomorrow By Together music video. I remember thinking, who is this? Because it looks verbatim like the idea I had in college. Literally TXT's branding is the type of artist that I want to work with in the future. So let's get into it and then I'll start talking and explaining things as we go. So straight out the gate, we see this journal. And this is the journal from a previous video called Runaway. So a journal, this journal would be considered a prop if it's being touched by an actor. So we're seeing things like props, the cookie tray, the little basket of food or donuts. So when we first see the oven, there's no fire at all. He takes the cookies out. Then the next time we come back to that same exact shot, there's a little bit of fire there. Here we go. See the fire continues to grow. The oven in a way is an Easter egg because it shows what's to come. This is a combination of production design and cinematography. It's framed around the boys. They are on fire. Here's another prop, that cell phone, capturing the memories. Here we go, that lighting change. So, you see this house. They could have chosen any location to tell the story, but they chose a house, and I thought that was a really clever idea. I love it, it gives it that suburb feel. You can really tell that they're friends, that they're kids, that they're younger. One of the things that I do when artists come to me for a music video is actually looking through the lyrics to get a feel for any words that are like really visual or stimulating. For example, in this song, scintilla, bright, a burst, burn, fire, memories, ruins, ash. There's this line in the song, it's bulgot soge so nun dungul doriji inside the flames you turned your back this house later on it's going to be on fire and right now their backs are to the house taking these very metaphorical lines and representing them quite literally beautiful also great wardrobe choices all throughout this video we have this like very boyish, fairy 
tail-like outfits. Then we got the like rugged urban looks. I love this shot of Hunin Kai. Also some really good lighting techniques here as well. So here the red foods come in. The use of red colored foods. Now there could be something really, really deep with the red colored foods, but to me, I feel like that helps illustrate the feelings of fire, you know, things that you're really passionate about, lots of emotion, but it also turns into a more gory, horror type look later on down the road when they start fighting with it and i think that horror fill really shows the darkness that surrounds them emotionally that ends up getting really really out of control Ooh. so we're starting to see the faces changing you know there was some happiness there was some playfulness and now things are getting a little bit more serious. The food is starting to get chaotic. You know, there's words like crumbled and castle, incinerate, resentment. And again, using these red foods to, they start bursting. You know, we're seeing them in smoothies. We're seeing them get thrown in the wall. And like I said, things are just starting to build and get more and more chaotic throughout the video. This shot right here, and the, with that lighting change, that's when the fire comes in. So he's grabbing the tomato, he squeezes it, and then when he looks at it, it looks like blood. And the feeling of that to me is like blood on my hands. And he looks up and his friends are just in this house that's just on fire. I feel like it's saying like, dang, like what have I done? What have we done? Like what's going on? Like he looks really confused and also maybe partially guilty you know when you have blood on your hands but now here really comes the fire their backs are literally to the fire just like in that one line and then their outfits change we have darker outfits now see we're getting more aggressive Kai again alone. Wow. Also really good editing. So many good things, but you know, trying to focus on production design. Like that's a good use of that sheet with the cinematography. So what I love about hyper-realistic production design is that it really adds to the themes. It's like a burst of saturation of whatever the feelings of the song are. But I also think using that hyper-realistic style adds to the fact that this is kind of like a nightmarish concept. It has like a, maybe like a nightmare on Elm Street type of vibe, like suburbs with these kids. And we're going back and forth between this lighter white light. And then there's like red lighting that keeps popping in and out. It's very kind of scary. You see Bumgy here on top of these tomatoes. It just really gives you that gory. It's not good. We're not in a good place. Ooh. Full fire in that shot. And you see their clothes that they were wearing in the beginning are now completely just, you know, they got that splat, it's just stained. Their clothes are now stained. In the beginning of the song where they're dancing in front of the house with no fire, their clothes are white. Once the house turns on fire, their clothes are black. These are very specific choices that the crew and the creative made to really help tell a story. So even if you don't see these things or really pick up on them in detail, you can still feel them as an audience and still enjoy it. I also love that in the beginning, they're eating these cookies that are shaped like boys, right? And then they're literally like eating the head off. But we kind of get that feeling of just like, they're hurting each other in some way. 
So now that you kind of got a little bit more information, if you're MOA or not MOA, maybe go back to my Sugar Rush ride review. I actually got a comment noting that there is a broken train in the ocean in the beginning of Sugar Rush Ride. And I actually did not see that until like my third time watching that video. Thank you guys. And I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. And I hope you like this series.